Today's adventure starts at the great elf tree. Chickens ride west. <gasps> oh my goodness! It's morning! I've got to do my deliveries! Relax, Mr. Elf. It's early. Oh, yes. I love these quiet moments before the day begins. Yes, it's so lovely and peaceful. <laughs> ah, it's the cockerel from the elf farm. The chickens have escaped! We have to round them up. Come on, you chickens. Whoa! Come on, chickens. Come on, come on. Come on, chickens. Come on, choo-choo. Whoa, good. Everything's under control. Thanks for your help, Mr. Elf. Lucky you were still here and not off on your deliveries. Oh, my deliveries! I really am late now. <laughs> Look at the little primroses. So pretty. <laughs> Good delivery. Morning, Mr. Elf. You're a bit late today. Yes, we had a problem with the chickens this morning. Chickens, eh? That reminds me. I really fancy an egg for breakfast. Ah, I didn't bring an egg today. No egg? No problem. I'll just go and get one. Can I come along? Of course. I'd better come too so I can pick a good egg. We'll drive back to the chickens, pick up the egg, load it on the truck, drive back here, and hey, presto, you'll have your egg, Your Majesty. Oh, all that for one egg? It'd be simpler if I had my own chicken. Then I'd get an egg in time for breakfast. <laughs> OK. Bye. Bye. You don't really want a chicken, do you? Of course not. I was joking. <laughs> an egg! The king wants an egg! Does he? We might have a problem there. The chickens aren't laying any eggs. What? Why not? The chickens have run out of food. They've pecked away all the plants. Till all that's left is mud. Yes, if you want a nice flower garden, don't keep chickens. Look, there's one little flower left. Oh, they like eating little flowers the best. Hey, you cheeky chicken. If only there was somewhere else they could live. Oh. Daddy said he'd like chickens at the little castle. Yes, he did sort of say that. It's true. The king said, I want my own chicken. It's the perfect solution. We'll move the chickens to the little castle. OK, everyone, we're moving the chickens west. Saddle up, cowboys. Yahee! Boys, you're moving chickens. So shouldn't you be called chicken boys? Uh, cowboys sounds better. Can I be a cowgirl? Sure thing, Holly. Here's your hat. <laughs> Wagons roll. Yeehaw! Yahoo! Yahoo! Yippee! -yay! I didn't realise moving chickens was so noisy. The chickens like noise, but we must be careful not to make a sudden loud noise. We don't want a stampede. Sudden loud noise? What, like bang? Ah, chicken on the loose! Whoa! This way, this way. Phew, that was close. Now, no more sudden loud noises, Nanny Plum. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. Wagons are a-rolling, west we are going. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. We've reached Crooked Creek. What do you mean, Crooked Creek? It's a creek, isn't it? And it's crooked. It's just a little river. Somehow we have to get the chickens to the other side. And chickens don't like crossing water. <laughs> I thought chickens loved water. Have you ever seen a chicken in water? All the time. Swimming up and down, going quack, quack. Look, there's one. <laughs> That's a duck. <sighs> Whatever. Chickens are not ducks and they don't like swimming. Ooh. So what can we do? We'll use an old cowboy trick to get the chickens across. 
Wait here. What's the old cowboy trick? I don't know, but it's bound to be very clever. Or very silly. But probably funny. Ta-da! Told you, he's dressed as Humpty Dumpty. Why is old elf? Why are you dressed as an egg? Chickens like to look after their eggs. So, if they see one floating across the water, they'll follow it. I'm an egg. Come in, chickens. The water's lovely and warm. I'm an egg. They're following the egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. That has to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. You see, it's all quite simple when you're an old cow hand like me. <gasps> oh, what's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a cowboy in his underpants before? Wow, the chickens really like pecking up flowers. They're eating machines, leaving nothing but mud. Yes, are you sure the king said he wants chickens at the little castle? That's what Daddy said. I want chickens at the little castle. Very well then, saddle up. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. Wagons are a-rolling, west we are going. We're in the Badlands. Badlands? It's the meadow. We'll stop here for the night. Get the wagons in a circle. Let's keep these chickens safe. Ah, sleeping outdoors with a campfire. Life doesn't get better than this. Unless you're home in bed, watching television. Talking of home, we'd better phone the king. Hello? Hello, King Thistle. We're almost there, but we need to camp out for the night. Wow! How long can it take to deliver one egg? Don't worry, Daddy. You'll have your chicken by the morning. My chicken? What does Holly mean by that? Bedtime, everybody. Nanny, you keep watch. What do I have to do? Keep watching the chickens and do not fall asleep. Righto. Morning, Nanny Plum. How did it go in the night time? Uh, fine. Where are the chickens? Oh, they've gone. Gone? The whole point of watching them was to make sure they didn't go. You never said that. You just said watch them. You watch them wander off into the night? Yes. Oh, all right, cowboys. Let's round up the chickens. Come back, chickens! Chickens, come back! Nanny, remember, no sudden loud noises. We don't want a chicken stampede. All right. You aren't exactly quiet yourself. Ha! Elves are good at being quiet. And, and we're, we're elves! elves. <laughs> Whoops. The chickens are stampeding! <laughs> Head them off at the pass? What does that mean? No idea. But they say it in all the cowboy films. The chickens are heading straight for the fairy village. <laughs> ah, chicken stampede! <laughs> Which way did the chickens go? They went that away. Yes, that's what they say in cowboy films as well. They went that away. Ah, <sighs> it's so lovely to wake up to the song of a little bird. <laughs> Good grief! What are those chickens doing here? You said you wanted a chicken, Daddy. I didn't expect you to take me seriously. You're the king. Of course we take you seriously. What are they doing to my flower garden? Eating it, Your Majesty. If you are going to keep chickens, you have to say goodbye to flower gardens. But you can have eggs for breakfast every day. <laughs> And you won't have any problems waking up. <laughs> 
today's adventure starts at the lake. The mermaid. Ah, Lucy, I do love fishing. Me too, Dad. It's so peaceful. Just what I need to get my nerves back in order. I wonder if we'll see any elves or fairies. Huh? Do we have to talk about weird magical stuff? <laughs> you know it upsets me. But you've seen the elves and fairies too, Dad. I've been thinking about it and I've decided I imagined it all. There are no such things as fairies or elves. <laughs> Hello, Lucy's dad. Ah, an elf in a submarine. Hello, Hello Lucy. Lucy. Hello, Ben and Holly. We're fishing. Uh, yes, we were just having a quiet morning's fishing. Dad, did you see that big fish? It's Big Bad Barry. <coughs> Barry. The fish is called Barry. Yes, the biggest, baddest fish in the lake. Whoa, what a whopper. <coughs> You have to throw him back in the water. He can't breathe. Of course I will. But, but just take a photo so I can show my friends. There you go, Barry. Bye-bye. Aha! We've got another fish. Oh, well, this isn't a fish. It's a mirror. Can we keep it, Dad? Yes, it's from the bottom of the lake, so it can't belong to anyone. Cool. OK, well, it's, it's been nice chatting to you, um, little folk. <laughs> but I think it's time to go home. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Do you think the mirror is magic, Dad? I hope not. I've seen enough magic for one day. <laughs> Listen, somebody's crying. <laughs> it's a girl. Hello. What are you doing in the lake? I live here. You live in the lake? Yes. I'm a mermaid. <laughs> my name is Oceana. Why were you crying? I've lost my mirror. That must be the mirror Lucy found. And where is this Lucy? She's a big girl. So she'll probably be on her way to school. <laughs> Bye, Lucy. Pick you up later. Bye, Dad! Oh, no. A mermaid's mirror must never be seen by big people. Don't worry. I'm sure Lucy won't show it to anyone. Look, everybody. I found a mirror. Ooh. Ooh! Lovely. That's perfect for our show and tell. Come up to the front, Lucy, and show the mirror to the whole class. Ah! My poor mirror. I'll never get it back because I can't walk on land. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get your mirror back. Oh, thank you. Home time, children. Hi, Dad. Hi, Lucy. Good day. Lucy. Psst, Lucy. Ben, Holly, what are you doing here? We've come for the mirror. It belongs to a mermaid. A mermaid? Wow. Yes. And she needs her mirror back. Oh, OK. Please tell me this is just a game. Elves and fairies are one thing, but mermaids? Haven't you read about mermaids in books? Yes, but I've also read about dragons and witches, and they're not real either. Yes, yes they, they are. are. We can show you witches and dragons. And loads more if you like. No, no, thanks. I'll take your word for it. So, where is this mermaid? After you left, she got called back home to the bottom of the lake. She'll be having her dinner. Fish, probably. We have to find Oceana and give her mirror back. Right then, into the submarine. Lucy, would you like to come too? Yes, please. Um, we'd love to join you, but I think we are just a tad too big to fit in your little submarine and... Ah! What's happening to me? Just shrinking you down. <laughs> My turn. Um, will we stay little forever? Oh, no. The spell will wear off in a bit and you'll grow big again. All aboard! <laughs> <laughs> Prepared to die! 
Dive, dive, dive! It's beautiful! Look, Dad! Yes, it's all very pretty. In fact, I'm beginning to quite enjoy this magical adventure. You see, Dad, the world of elves and fairies is fun. Yes, I don't know why I was so worried about being magically shrunk down. It's amazing to be as small as these sweet little fishes. Not all the fish in the lake are sweet and little. Don't forget the fish you met this morning. Big, bad Barry. As I remember, Barry is about this big. Uh, that was before we were shrunk down, Dad. Now who would be about... That big! Oh, look! It's Barry! Ah! What does he want with us? He wants to eat the submarine. Any boat with me in it, Barry wants to eat. Yum, yum. Hold tight, everyone. I'm going to reverse. Big reversing. Big reversing. Big reversing. Now we go forwards. It's no good. That is too fast. He's going to eat us. Don't worry, Lucy. We've been in Barry's tummy before. And it was fine. That's good to know. Well, hello, Barry. <laughs> I don't understand. He should have eaten us by now. Maybe he remembers how my dad was nice to him this morning. That's right. You let Barry go. And fish never forget. Or is that elephants? <coughs> oh, that's nice. Barry's saying that as you so kindly let him go this morning, he is your best friend forever. In fact, he now thinks of you as his brother. Lovely. Uh, one tiny problem. In all the excitement of being chased by Barry, we've got lost. <laughs> Barry's saying that he knows where the mermaids live and he'll take us there. That's what his brother wants. His brother? That's you, Dad. Oh, yes. <clears throat> um, Barry, old brother, please lead us to the land of the mermaids. <laughs> Right ho! Look, Barry's found the mermaids. Mermaids love to swim along. Mermaids sing their mermaid song. Mermaids comb their lovely They hair. sing so beautifully. Mermaids, mermaids wow, a mermaid palace. This must be where Oceana lives. Diving suits on, everybody. Nice, Barry. Ah, uh, we're friends of your brother. Yes, they're with me. Mermaids, mermaids everywhere. Hello. Hello, mermaids. We're looking for Oceana. She's over there, being sad. <laughs> Oceana, we brought your mirror back. Oh, thank you so much. But why is it so tiny? We had to shrink it down to fit in the submarine. Don't worry, the spell will wear off soon and it'll grow big again. There you go. My mirror. Thank you all so much. You're very welcome. Well, it's been uh, very interesting meeting you uh, mermaids, but we must be getting back now. Bye, Oceana. Bye, everyone. Bye, Betty. <laughs> suddenly got big again. Well, that happened to me and my dad. Yep. And the fun bit is, you don't know when. Which means we should get a move on. We don't want them to grow big in the submarine. Ooh, I'm growing! Yeah, so am I. We must get to land. Full speed ahead. Almost there. Almost there. Try not to grow too much. There was no need to panic. We had plenty of time. What an adventure! Yes, it was quite amazing. Remember, Lucy's dad, the little kingdom is meant to be secret. You must not tell any of your friends what you saw today. Tell my friends what I saw today? Let me think about that. And then the magical fairies shrank me down to the size of my thumb. I saw singing mermaids, and did I tell you that I now have a fish for a brother? No, I will not be telling anyone. 
what I saw today. Today's adventure starts at the magic bus stop. <laughs> Daisy and Poppy go to the museum. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's playgroup outing. Uh, Mrs Fotheringill, are you sure it's a good idea taking the toddlers on an outing? They can be quite a handful. <laughs> <laughs> the little darlings do have high spirits, but this time I'm not going to let them get the better of me. That's their spirit, Mrs Fotheringill. She's doomed. Let's check all the toddlers are here. Daisy and Poppy. <laughs> uh, Daisy and Poppy have promised to be as good as gold today. Not that that means very much. I'm sure if Daisy and Poppy say they will be good, they will be. Good as gold! <laughs> nettle Elf? Ouch! She stung Mrs. Fotheringill with her nettle. Raspberry Fairy? <laughs> My little sister. Even her wand is rude. <laughs> oh, and last but not least, Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin like Fodigil. Tarquin is a monster. Remember last time when the toddlers made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear? Yes. All they found was her shoes. <laughs> Now, for today's outing, we're going on a trip to the museum. The big museum? But that's full of big people. Yes, but the museum has so many interesting things for the toddlers to look at. Are you going to take away their wands, Mrs. Fotheringill? No, Holly. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a catastrophe. What's a catastrophe, Daddy? What this is going to be. Oh, look! Here comes the magic bus. All aboard! Come on, everyone. Hold tight. Going up. Next up, the big museum. Now, as you know, there will be big people at the museum. And we don't want to be seen by big people, do we? No! So what should you do if a big person sees you? Turn them into a frog. No, no, no. If a big person sees you, just pretend to be a toy, like this. I'm a toy. I'm a toy. Last stop, big museum. Everybody off. Oh. Oh. Keep together. In we go. Wow, these stairs are big. Well, this museum is built for big people. Follow me, everyone, and try not to be seen. Ah! Whoa! Look, Mum, a tiny little person. I'm a toy! I'm a toy! It's a toy. Some poor child must have lost it. Just put it over there so they can find it again. OK, Mum. Phew! That was close. Yes, Ben, but it shows the plan works. If you're seen, just pretend to be a toy. I still think turning them into frogs is simpler. In the big museum, we can get an idea of how wonderful it was in the past. This first room is about the Stone Age. Ooh. A long time ago, the big people lived in caves. These are models of how the cave people must have looked. There's a button to press. Did the cave people have electric light bulbs? No, that's to show how the campfire would have looked when it was lit. Here's another button. <laughs> they move. Ooh. You see, King Thistle, the toddlers are being as good as gold. Good as gold. <laughs> it's actually going quite well. The toddlers haven't even made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear yet. Stone Age times. Close your eyes and imagine what it must have been like. <laughs> I have always wanted to know what it would be like to live in the Stone Age. Abracadabra! <laughs> oh dear, I suppose it was never going to last. All they've left is her shoes. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent Mrs. Fotheringill? Stone, Stone Age! Age. <gasps> They've sent Mrs. Fotheringill back to the Stone Age. That was a very naughty thing to do. Bring Mrs. Fotheringill back right now. <sighs> okay. Oh, 
On second thoughts, you don't want to know what it was like to live in the Stone Age. Oh, my shoes! It's good to have them back. Right. Next room, Ancient Egypt. Ooh. Look, here is a model showing how a pyramid was built. It's quite small. Were the ancient Egyptians the size of elves and fairies? No, the ancient Egyptians were big people. And the pyramids are huge. But they wouldn't be able to fit a full-sized pyramid into the museum. Big. That's right, Daisy. Think how big a real pyramid would be. Here we go again. Use your imagination. Big. Ah, oh, no! Stop! Stop it! My turn. What's going on here? Big people are coming. What's in there? Everyone, pretend to be toys. And what are these little toys doing here? Hello. Uh, hello? Frog time. <laughs> well done, Tarquin. Like they always say, when things are not going quite right, turn them into a frog. That doesn't even rhyme. And turning people into frogs is not a good way to do things. Why not? He'll turn back to a person in a moment and he won't remember a thing. we better get out of here before he turns back again. Yes, on with the tour. Oh, my goodness, that was all a bit of an adventure. What we need now is something a little less dangerous. Next room, the Vikings. Less dangerous? Vikings? People think the Vikings just ran around shouting. But really, they were gentle people who farmed and played music. If only there were Vikings around today, I'd love to know what they'd say to us. <laughs> she never learns. Abracadabra! <laughs> Interesting fact about Vikings, all they ate was Spam. I don't think that is correct. It's true! Vikings ate Spam. It was on the telly. Uh, Nanny, what happens when the frogs turn back into Vikings? They'll be very confused and maybe a tiny bit annoyed. Right, let's make sure we're not around when that happens. Wow, look at all those frogs. And what's this? Sorry about this, but I'm going to have to turn you all into frogs. Just for a bit. Eh? Frog time! Danny, why are there still bangs going on in the other rooms? Well, it was going to happen at some point anyway, so I thought I'd save a bit of time and just turn the whole lot of them into frogs. All the big people in the museum? You've turned them all into frogs? That's right. I knew you'd be pleased. Oh, what happened? Where am I? It's the museum man. He's turned back to himself again. Yes, and he's confused and a little bit annoyed. Ah! Oh, no! Ah! All the Vikings are turning back too. Right. I think this is as good a time as any to leave. Let's get out. Stop the Little Kingdom! Last stop! Everybody off! Oh! Well, all in all, that didn't go too badly. We survived and the museum wasn't destroyed. <laughs> Good gold! You see? All you have to do is trust the little darlings and they will repay your trust. She's really in a world of her own. She never learns. And next time, I thought we could visit a... Next time? Yes, we'll visit a big castle. You know, I've always wanted to live in the times of knights in armour. Abracadabra! Yeah! <laughs> <sighs> Let's bring her back. Abracadabra. On second thoughts, I never want to live in the time of knights in armour. 
think the safest, nicest time is right here and now. <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the fairy village. Father's Day. <sighs> Happy Father's Day, Papa. I made you breakfast. Oh, thank you, Strawberry. Look at your card. To the nicest papa in the world. How sweet. And no work for you today. You get the day off. That sounds good. But what shall I do? You can play. Who will I play with? The other daddies, of course. It's Father's Day for every daddy. Morning, Dad. Breakfast. Oh, what a lovely card, Ben. It's a picture of me waving from the elf truck. <gasps> the truck! I've got to make my food deliveries! No, Mr Elf. You've got the day off. But, but... Don't worry. Someone else is doing your deliveries. Oh, really? Who? Food delivery! Come and get it! What? Nanny Plum? Hello, Mr Elf. I'm in charge of your deliveries today. So you just sit back and relax. Sit back and relax with Nanny doing my deliveries. Where's the break? Oops! Oh, dear. Morning time. Hey, what? Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Ah, breakfast in bed. If only every day could start like this. But every day does start like this. You always have breakfast in bed. Ah, yes. Read your card, Daddy. You're the best daddy in the universe. <laughs> and today, you can do whatever you like. Yes, you're not the king today. You're just my daddy. Marvellous. Now, make sure Mrs Fig's egg is nice and fresh. And don't forget the orange for Mrs Peach. Right, a peach for Mrs Orange. No, an orange for Mrs Peach. Yes, yes, whatever. <laughs> Hey, hey, you forgot the egg. Hello there. It's the king. Hooray! Oh, oh, I'm not the king today. I'm just a humble daddy, like you lot. And today, all the daddies have to play. Yes, here's a ball. Oh, oh. To you, Dad. To you, Your Majesty. To you. Oops. It's Redbeard, the elf pirate. Which scurvy scoundrel will be shooting cannonballs at me now? Uh, that would be me. Ooh, begging your pardon, King Thistle. That's quite all right. I'm just a normal daddy today. All the daddies have the day off. Because it's Father's Day. Ah, I know. And that's why I brought this here card. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Fred. Seen Dad today. Hello. I've come to join in the fun. I'm sorry, wise old elf, but you have to be a daddy to have the day off. Actually, Holly, I am a daddy. I have three sons. Three sons? Yes, but I don't talk about it much. It's a bit uh, embarrassing. My eldest boy ran off to sea to make his fortune. He has a big red beard and he's a, a pirate. Happy Father's Day, Dad! Thank you, son. And from me too, Dad. Thank you. Redbeard, you never said the wise old elf was your dad. Well, pirates don't like to admit they have mummies and daddies. True, but they all do. And that's a fact. Captain Squid! Aha! What are you doing here, you scurvy old rogue? I'm keeping an eye on you, you blackguard, so you don't steal my treasure. Scallywag! Scoundrel! Ha ha! Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you, son. What? Captain Squid is your son, too? That's, that's right! Oh, two of my son's pirates. But at least I have one son who's sensible. Guess what, Dad? I have decided to be a Viking. Ha-ha! Oh. <laughs> Food delivery! Oh, good. I ordered an egg. I've got an egg, but I've got an orange. Have you brought my orange? Sorry, Mrs Peach. Just out of oranges. Here's some broccoli instead. 
I don't like broccoli. Oh, but it's good for you. This is a lettuce, but I ordered a cabbage. Oh, for goodness sake. You're all so grumpy. We're only grumpy because you muddled our delivery. It's not like when Mr Elf does it. Oh, here. You can help yourselves. <laughs> Food delivery. Bye. <laughs> to you, Ben. To you, Dad. Let's see how high I can kick the ball. Ah! Ben? Hello, Mum. Did you kick this ball? Um... No, it was, uh, me. Oh, dear. This Father's Day game has got a bit silly, hasn't it? It's not as bad as last Mother's Day. Yes, you mummies know how to party. <laughs> What time it is? Yes, it's Mother's Day! <laughs> yes, maybe we did go a bit wild. Come on, daddies, let's play in the meadow. Hooray! Let's play basketball. We'll need two nets. We'll need a referee. Dum de dum de dee dee doo. Nanny, we need a referee for our game. Okay, what's the game? Basketball. Never heard of it. One team has to throw the ball into this net and the other team has to throw the ball into that net. And you can only... OK, OK, I don't need to know all the little details. Let's start. But I haven't finished telling you the rules. Yes, yes. Go on, Ben. Throw it in the net. Nanny, in basketball, you don't say goal. You say... Yes, yes. I'm awarding you five points. But that's too many. I decide the rules. I'm the referee. <coughs> Carry on. Remember, Daddy, you mustn't kick the ball. Oh, I see. I'll use magic then. <coughs> Aha! Goal! You can't use magic. It's Father's Day. What has magic got to do with Father's Day? Yellow card for being naughty. But I'm the king. Red card for talking back. Play on. <laughs> Hooray! Ten points to that team. No, no, that's too many points. Oh, this will take forever. Let's make it easier. What if the ball had legs? <laughs> then he could score on his own. Hooray! This is too easy. OK, I'll make it harder. I'll give the next legs too. Oh, this is ridiculous. Why don't you add some dragons for good measure? Oh, that's a good idea, wise old elf. Dragons! <laughs> ah, so this is basketball. What a fun game. Well done, wise old elf, for suggesting it. But, but, but... Game over. What's the score, Nanny? What score would you like? Can we have... A hundred million. OK. A hundred million points to this team. Hooray! Can we have a hundred million too? Yes. A hundred million points to that Hooray! team. Oh, that means it's a draw. Hooray! Oh, what a great Father's Day this has been. It'll be hard getting back to my work tomorrow. Yes, it'll be hard getting back to my food deliveries again. Oh, the deliveries. Uh, I'm afraid it all went a bit wrong today. Mrs Peach wanted an orange and Nanny gave her broccoli. And I think I gave Mr Egg a peach. Or was it the other way round? It'll take weeks to sort this out. I'm quite looking forward to it. I really enjoyed Father's Day. It's a shame it's over. There's still a tiny bit of Father's Day left, Papa. I'll read you a bedtime story. <laughs> Thank you, Strawberry. Ready? Once upon a time... A big bad wolf came along to the straw house. And he huffed and he puffed. And then there was a loud knock on the door. Who could that be? said the princess. With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, the pirates set sail across the deep blue sea. Does the story have to be about pirates? Not about 
pirates. What else could the story be about? How about Vikings? Oh, OK. Vikings, then. The Vikings set sail across the deep blue sea. And on the way, they met a pirate! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad being a father. Not bad at all. Today's adventure starts at Gaston's cave. <laughs> Gaston's birthday. <laughs> Come on, Gaston, wiggle your legs. <laughs> Gaston loves wiggling his legs. <laughs> oh, has Gaston got one new spot today? I'm not sure. Do ladybirds get new spots? Ladybirds get a new spot for every birthday. Wow, Gaston's got lots of spots, so he must have had lots of birthdays. <laughs> and lots of birthday parties. <laughs> oh, have you never had a birthday party, Gaston? <laughs> That's really sad. Daddy! Mummy! It's not fair! Gaston's never had a birthday party. Well, I wish I'd never had a birthday party. Oh, darling, it's your birthday tomorrow and you'll enjoy it. No, I won't. This year I don't want a party. Oh, Daddy, you say that every year. Well, this year I mean it. I don't like my parties with the elf band singing about me getting older. You're lucky you're getting a party, Daddy. Gaston's never even had one. <sighs> then give my party to Gaston. I'm going to have a bath. Oh, same every year. So grumpy about his birthday, but he always enjoys it in the end. Come on, let's go and see how the elf band are getting on. Hello, wise old elf. We've come to hear the song you're doing for Daddy's birthday. Ah, yes. We've come up with a good one this year. I think King Thistle will be very pleased. King Thistle is old, 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 and today he's even older. King Thistle is old, 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 old. Very sweet. And I, Redbeard the Elf Pirate, will fire myself out of this cannon in the King's honour. But the King's birthday isn't until tomorrow. This is a dry run to see if it works. Light the fuse! Lighting the fuse. Whee! Hurrah! Where do you think he'll land? Who knows? Ah. Oh. I do like a nice, relaxing bath. It's good to get away from all that talk about birthdays. Happy birthday, Your Majesty! Ah! Get out of my bath! It's not my birthday! I know! This is a dry run! Now, see here! I don't want any birthday stuff! Ah, that's what you say every year! Look! I don't want a cake, I don't want a song, and I don't want a pirate in my bath! So, you really don't want a party? No! I don't want a party! Not this year, not next year, not any year! Never! No! Party! And that's when he started shouting. He was a tiny bit angry. So he really doesn't want a party? No. Oh, dear. What will we do with the presents we wrapped? And the cakes I baked? And our new song? And me cannon! We've got a whole birthday party ready and no one to give it to. Um, Daddy did say Gaston could have his party. <laughs> Poor Gaston has never had a birthday party. Would you like a birthday party, Gaston? <laughs> then it's decided it will be Gaston's birthday party. <laughs> Hooray! We'll need a new song for Gaston from the Elf Band. Yes, Your Majesty. And I'll bake Gaston some cakes. And I'll fire myself out of me cannon in Gaston's honour. He'll appreciate it. Not like somebody whose name I won't mention. The King, I mean. <laughs> this will be the best party ever. 
What do you think Gaston would like for his birthday present? A squeaky toy. Very good. <coughs> now to wrap it. Spotty wrapping paper. Brilliant. Hello. I've finished my bath. Uh-oh. What are you doing? Relax, darling. It's nothing to do with you. A likely story. It really isn't. So stop fussing. Ah, uh, fine. Mmm. Can I smell cakes? I thought so. What's going on, Nanny? Are you baking cakes? Yes, I am. These cakes had better not be for me. Ho, ho, ho. They're not. Now, Shoe, go on. I haven't got time to talk to you. I suppose it is nice that they want to give me a party so much. Ho, ho, ho. What shall we do for Gaston's birthday card? Let's draw a picture of Gaston. Good idea. Hello, Holly. Hello, Daddy. We're making a birthday card. I don't suppose it's for me, is it? No. No, of course not. Ah. I don't think my face is that red. And I don't have black spots. I told you, Daddy. It's not for you. <laughs> oh, yes. So you did. Ben! Hello, Dad! Do you want to help deliver the party invitations? Yes, please! Off we go! Oh, they're delivering invitations for my party. How sweet! Special delivery! Invitations to Gaston's birthday! Gaston's party is tomorrow at the Frog Pond! Are you all coming? Yes! yes. Of course we are! Where next? We mustn't forget Gaston. It is his party! <laughs> there you go, Gaston. An invitation to your very own birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves eating letters. So, are you coming to your party, Gaston? Uh. I think that means yes. Oh, how are the preparations going for my party tomorrow? Your party? You're not having a party. Ho <laughs> ho! I know your little plan. What little plan? You told us not to plan anything. Ha <laughs> ha! That's right. I did. Good night then. Good night. <sighs> oh, no one here. I expect they're all downstairs. <laughs> no birthday cards? Where is everybody? Of course, they're all secretly hiding outside, ready to shout, Happy Birthday, King Thistle! <laughs> oh, there's no one here. They must be having the party somewhere else. Ah, that sounds like a party. I'd better go and find out where it is. Not much of a party without me, the birthday boy. Everyone is here, even Gaston's brother Tony with Pam and the little ladybird Amber, <laughs> Emerald <laughs> and Keith. <laughs> Happy birthday, Gaston. Here's your present. <laughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? I'm sorry, do you have an invitation? I don't need one. I'm King Thistle. King Thistle, King Thistle. No, your name's not on here. What? But it's my party. No, it's not, mate. It's Gaston the Ladybird's party. What? Take it easy, fella. It's supposed to be a happy occasion. It's all right. He's with us. What's going on? Where's my birthday party? You said you didn't want a party. I know I said that, but what I really meant was I do want a party. Oh, Daddy. You are silly. Yes, I know. Oh, well, I'm sure Gaston won't mind sharing his party with you. <laughs> Gaston, be nice and share your present with King Thistle. <laughs> Gaston, that's not how to behave on your birthday. <laughs> For me? How kind. <laughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> yes, for you to chase. And now it's time for the birthday song. He's round and he's red with big black spots. How dare they? It's about Gaston, 
Daddy. He rolls on his back and he barks a lot. He's gassed on the ladybug. That was really fun. Maybe birthday parties aren't that bad. What's that noise? Happy birthday! Birthday, Daddy. Oh, oh, thank you, Holly. Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree on Christmas Eve. Ben and Holly's Christmas. Hello. Ah, big people. Hello, wise old elf. It's me, Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Christmas. Why are you dressed like that? I'm in disguise. Top secret and all that. Ooh! I've popped down to check how you elves and fairies are doing with the Christmas preparations. Everything is in hand, Mr Christmas. We've made all the toys for you to give to the children of the world. Dolls' houses, footballs and teddy bears. Lovely. And Mr. Elf has been flying day and night, delivering the toys to you at the North Pole. Good, good. And how about the Christmas crackers? The fairies are in charge of the crackers. Hello, everyone. We have a visitor. Ho, ho, ho. Ah! Of course. You don't know who I am. I'm in disguise. You're Father Christmas. Oh, yes. Mr Christmas, would you like to test a cracker? <laughs> wow, that's loud. Yes, Nanny Plum is in charge of the bangs. Let's bang, please, Nanny. What? But the bang is the best bit. That's why we do the cracker-making underground. Let's try the paper hat. How do I look? <laughs> Very Christmassy. And we've got some good cracker jokes this year. What do you get if you cross a kangaroo and a sheep? A woolly jumper. <laughs> Daddy, that's awful. Cracker jokes are meant to be awful. That's why we get King Thistle to write them. <laughs> and the cracker toys. This year, we've made telephones to put in the crackers. A tiny telephone. Does it really work? No, it's just a lump of plastic. And down there, all the bits and bobs are put into the crackers by magic. Mr Elf has delivered loads of Christmas crackers to the shops already. Good. The big people pick them up and put them on the shelves. And they have no idea the crackers were made by elves and fairies. Jolly good work. And how are the Christmas trees? The pine elves have been growing them all year. Hello. We've come to see the Christmas trees. Ho, ho, ho. Hello, Father Christmas. Like the outfit. What fashion is it exactly? Uh, it's meant to be a disguise. So many lovely Christmas trees. Yes, pine elves are good at growing Christmas trees. And we're pine elves! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this pine tree has little windows in it. Yes, we live in a great oak tree. The pine elves live in a great pine tree. All elves live in trees. Goodness knows why. How do you get all the Christmas trees to the shops? Once a year, the big people come and cut the trees down. And they have no idea the Christmas trees were grown by us little people. But what if they cut down the great pine tree? There's no danger of that. The great pine tree is too big. Everything seems in hand. Thank you, elves and fairies. Our pleasure. I need to get back to the North Pole and change clothes. I can't deliver presents dressed like this. Bye. Bye, 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 bye Father Christmas. Now, where did I leave my sleigh? The big people should be here any moment to cut the trees down. Here they come. 
They mustn't see us. Everyone into the great pine tree. You all stay down here. I'm going upstairs to take a look. Close the shutters. Good. Now we're completely hidden. Right, men. Let's cut these Christmas trees down. Timber! Problem. We pine elves are used to the noise. Uh, that was loud. I think they've finished. Excellent. They've taken all the trees. Uh, even the great pine tree. Ah, where's the upstairs gone? The big people have taken it. Don't worry. The wise old elf will sort this out. Uh, where is the wise old elf? It's for you. Oh, hello. Your Majesty. It's a disaster. The great pine tree has been cut down with all the pine elves inside. Well, if they will insist on living in a Christmas tree, what do they expect? <laughs> Your Majesty, that is not helpful. Honestly, why can't they live like normal people in a castle? Nanny Plum, tea break. Ooh, thank you, Queen Thistle. Cracker testing is thirsty work. <gasps> That's the sound of big feet. The big people are coming. They must see the little castle. Oh, yes. Um, uh, I know. I'll shrink it down. Shrink, little castle. Shrink, shrink, shrink. <laughs> Good. With any luck, the big people won't notice it now. Ah! Nanny Plum! You've shrunk me as well! Uh... Oh! Here come the big people! Now, where did I leave my sleigh? Oh, what's this? A toy castle. I didn't know the elves were making these. What's that squeaky noise? Oh, well, I'll just take this toy to the North Pole myself, or else some poor child won't get their Christmas present. Uh, Mr. Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Away we go! Oh, dear. Home at last. Uh, where is my castle? Uh, somehow it sort of shrunk itself down. And Father Christmas thought it was a toy and he's taken it to the North Pole. What? Well, if some people will live in houses that look like little toy castles, what do they expect? Hmm, <sighs> the Queen will sort this out. Queen Thistle! We have a little problem up here that we might need a hand sorting out. Where is the Queen? Uh, on her way to the North Pole. Somehow she shrank down inside the castle. I see. I'll just have to sort this mess out myself then. Let's give Father Christmas a ring. Ah, good. A phone. Ah! Put me down. Ah! Get me out of this cracker. Still one more box of crackers? Let's get them loaded. Taking a long time. I'm the king! <laughs> oh, another box of crackers. It's funny, we never see who delivers them. Ah! Oh, trapped in a cracker! <sighs> oh well, at least I can phone for help. Ah, oh, yes, it's not a phone. It's a lump of plastic. Get me out of this cracker! Trees! Last delivery of Christmas trees! Wow, that's a big Christmas tree. Stacked up in a garden centre. How embarrassing. Ah, the North Pole! I need to get ready for my Christmas deliveries. 
one last toy to be wrapped. I'm not a toy. I'm Queen Thistle. Ah! Help! Let me out! I'm a queen. King Thistle trapped in a cracker? The wise old elf stuck in a Christmas tree? Queen Thistle wrapped up as a present? What will happen next? Join us again as our Christmas adventure continues. <laughs> <laughs>